What's up, Prime Fam? What's going on, guys? Eight weeks out from the Cali Mesa meets heavy squat and deadlift workouts. This is every Saturday for me and Kristen. It is our heaviest workout of the week, our strength-based squats and deads. We aligned it on Saturdays to account and manage for acute fatigue going into the meet because Saturday is the day we're gonna be uh, training on, or excuse me, competing on, so we like to practice feeling really fresh on this day. We're gonna be talking about fatigue today. We're gonna be talking about women and their periods and the fatigue they experience from it today. And then we're also gonna be talking about optimal hip and knee movement in the sumo deadlift and a bunch of tips for the sumo and much more. Let's dive right into it. We're going to give you three rules for fatigue and how much you should be experiencing, how much is too much, and certain just guidelines to follow uh, because I, I get the question of how much fatigue is too much all the time. So three rules. First rule is a three to five percent strength change is normal. However, if it's lasting for more than two weeks at any given time, you may need to deload unless you're really in tune with your body, know how to work around it. Second rule is going to be movement pattern changes from tightness or uh, achy joints or just moving poorly. Fatigue always manifests poor movement. The squat might feel a little foreign or like you can't get into position, things like that. Third rule is going to be work capacity fluctuations, which is very different than strength. Strength is like top end strength, uh, how your heavy sets go. Work capacity is how many sets or, and reps you can handle in a workout. Those are very different. You can see here, this was my heavy double for the day. Uh, I believe this was 539 pounds. And then after I went up for a heavy pause single at uh, 500, I think 61 pounds. Check me on the kilo math, guys. Uh, I am using a squat bar, but this was not a great day for me. This was a really fatigued day, and that's why we're talking about this today. This moved like crap, but I'm gonna show you what my squats looked like a couple weeks before this. So as you can see there, 605 pounds on the bar fucking flew up. 561 for not even really a pause single, it was a half-ass pause. Moved like crap today. My work capacity was also uh, messed with. I only did a couple back down sets because I was so gassed on this day. Had to take a little bit of a taper um, on this week because my knees were kind of acting up. But those are kind of three rules to abide by and to understand when it comes to fatigue and what you can expect. Now women get this as well with their PMS symptoms. Uh, and the problem is, is they get it kind of times 10 sometimes. Some women are really uh, get some really adverse effects from it. Luckily, Chris and hers aren't too bad, but there are some things to notice. I'm going to give some rules now for getting around your period, though, that I think could help every women, woman in their training. The first is going to be to always use some form of auto regulation. Kristen here has a heavy top set of two that she's building up to, and it is all auto regulated by the RP scale, so it allows her to scale it down if she is dealing with some PMS symptoms. The second rule is going to be warm up the movement like crazy. You'll notice that she has done a ton of sets. And I didn't even film all the sets she did on her way up. Uh, but she's warming up because she's having some movement issues. Again, the movement pattern kind of changes when fatigue gets really high. The next rule is going to be alter the volume before intensity if needed. So if you're going to alter anything, try to alter the actual volume, how many sets and reps you're doing uh, before you actually alter the intensity. And when I say intensity, I really mean some of the back down percentages you might be doing. The top sets are auto-regulated, so that part will take care of itself. But the back down percentage work, that's what you want to be altering if needed. Rule number four is still try and get the work done. Try to do everything you have planned out. That's why it's important to use auto regulation because it can scale it for you to still get a really good workout done. And then five, get a coach or know how and learn how to program for yourself so you can work around some of these things. This was Kristen's top set for the day, 237 pounds, I believe. 
smoked it pretty good given the the circumstance looked to be about rp7 or 8 uh nothing too crazy and then after that she had some back down sets so she does her top set and then after a top set she did two by two at subtracting five percent load from the bar so even though it's a back down set it's actually still auto regulated because it's based on how she performs on that top set which was auto regulated and then after this two by two she also had uh, some set percentage work that we had for her but that stuff was pretty sub maximal so she was able to get through it you can see here her depth is barely there again movement tightness things like that uh, they get fluctuated with or mess with quite a bit when it's that time of month this was her final back down set I believe of four maybe she did I think one more after this all right, we're gonna use my boy Lulu, Luis. If you guys saw the bench video, you'll remember him. He's my youngest power lifter under me, but has some of the best form around. And I really love his sumo right now. It's grooving so well. Look at that beautiful hip position, quad stay in the game until he breaks the floor. High head position, high back position, extended back. Everything looks perfect here. But on his next sets with 375 and acclimation set, there's some stuff I didn't like. Look at those knees. You see how they just caved in right as he broke the floor? We don't like that. We always wanna keep the knees out so the hips are closer to the bar. Contrary to what people believe, this actually isn't to make it easier on the hips. It's to ensure the back and chest stay in a more vertical position and it actually makes it easier to keep the back extended and to pull the hips through once you've broken the floor and got in the uh, quads out of the way. So it doesn't actually reduce moment arm on the hips, but instead it puts the hips in a more advantageous position later, through, later on to pull through as well as getting that back in a more vertical position so the rectors do a little bit less. You'll notice this set, this is him retaking it. The, knee, the knees stay out much, much better. His hips stay externally rotated. So he comes into that hip shoot, knees stay out, quads stay in the game, and he's much more vertical. This is a way more advantageous position for sumo pullers. You'll see a lot of people lock the knees in the sumo, but then they can't get the hips through. When that goes wrong, it's because this is going wrong off of the floor. So watch this here in a side-by-side -side comparison on the screen. Left is the back knees cave in right is a good knees stay out so the hips stay externally rotated you'll notice the reps a little bit slower but he's in a much better position here look at the height of his chest and back and how vertical he is in that good side on the right and this allows him to push those hips through much easier and notice here by the third rep that was the second one look how his speed is caught up i actually played these clips in the order it was played or in the speed it was played he's actually uh just as fast by the third rep his speed kind of catches up now also notice here how his chest is beyond his delts right there that's going to come into play a little bit later the things i want to give you was a rundown list of the things that i think are the most important for a great sumo position first is going to be hips open and they rotate out as you come into the pole so notice how he keeps those hips open and then they start to rotate out as he comes into that pole and he's able to pull those hips through the second tip is going to be to keep your chest pop beyond the shoulders like i was showing you from the side we always want to see that your chest is pronounced outward and the shoulders are back behind it so when we look from the side we want to see the chest popping out beyond the shoulders this ensures the back is extended and vertical and that you're getting the chest up and you're able to show that emblem on your shirt to the world in front of you third is going to be back position extended and vertical notice how extended his back is there's no rounding there and he's very vertical as he comes through the pole and his head is in that high hip position that's number four always keep the head position high a lot of people want a very neutral neck i don't agree with it i prefer pulling with a more extended neck and then the last couple tips are going to be to stay in the quads off the floor always ensure that you remain in your quads meaning that you don't just let the knees shoot back that you press through the floor as if it's a giant leg press and you utilize those quads to break the floor and then six once you've broken the floor the hips must continuously rotate out and push forward so you can ensure after the knees have locked the hips pull through very strong and hard and those are going to be your main tips for uh, an awesome kick-ass sumo all right moving on to my deadlifts which also didn't go that great and i tried something new notice my fingertips there see how i'm using that fingertip grip um this is something a lot of high level sumo pullers will do and even some conventional pullers david wilson's a great example of someone who just won uh, raw nationals uh, the 93 kilogram class the dude is a fucking beast he uses a fingertip grip i tried this for today and decided it wasn't for me at least for now i may revisit it later on i built up here uh in my sets using it so you can see i'm gripping really low in the fingers and right here when i got to i think this is 551 i knew with how slow that move that wasn't normal so i retook it here's my normal grip also low in my fingers but not as low move way way faster you can see here in the comparison it just springs up a lot easier when I use a full grip now my theory to this 
is, is I've actually had my grip fail on sets before. And I think when your grip is limited, it kind of actually shuts down the rest of your body. I don't have a scientific abstract to prove this, but it's something I found to be true. Um, when your grip gives out, everything else gives out. And I don't have a strong grip. And I think if I worked on building up my grip in that position, maybe the rest of my body would move faster. But it's pretty obvious like night and day, you know, when you saw those videos side by side, that um, my grip just seemed to limit the output of my body for some reason. So I decided to just keep going up uh, with my normal grip as usual. The day still did not go as planned. You can see I'm pretty pissed off about that set. I was just really fatigued. And after that, guys, I just had some back down deads at like 551, really nothing too impressive uh, or, or anything to write about. It's a fatigue day, hard day. But moving on to a more narrow sumo puller uh, who also abides by the same rules we mentioned earlier, but it looks a little different because she's in this narrow stance. Kristen, my girlfriend, she has a beautiful sumo. Actually, one of um, the better sumos in my opinion out there. And I'm really proud of uh, how much work she's put into this. But notice here, she abides by all the same rules. Look at the back position here, very uh, extended and vertical. She breaks the floor she gets her chest high but she starts a little bit more bent over because she is in a more narrow stance but nonetheless as she breaks the floor you'll notice her hips rotate out the knee goes out to the side she stays in the quads all the same thing look here in the slow-mo watch the knee watch how it's going to rotate out towards the side hip scoop under chest gets vertical so it happens in a different way but it happens the same as louise we're just in a more narrow position and that's because her hip anatomy calls for this so she was building up for ascending sets of two here today, um, but what I want to talk about is some consistency issues. And this is something I actually see on a lot of intermediate and even experienced power lifters. Uh, they get some issues with their deadlift when they get up a little bit heavier. Notice here, um, as she built up to her top set, uh, I believe we got up to 320 and then 330. This is the 330 here. Watch this first rep. It's going to fly up. Hips and knees rotate out just as they should. Hips scoop under. But boom, she drops that bar and the bar moved away from her. She always drops the bar way too much as she gets into her heavier sets. It's because she psychs herself out. Look at that bar. Look how far away it is from the shin. She tries to pull it back in, but by that time, the shin is so far away, she's lost all leverage on the bar. Then we retook the set. Again, the rep flies up, but she lets it slam down. She tries to reset her body this time, but look at her grip here. It's actually going to bring up that point I mentioned earlier. Watch her hand, how it pulls open. Look again. You see how those fingers just start slipping and her body got nerfed after she said it felt like she couldn't just pull it. What we would want instead is for her to actually put this bar down a little bit more tension, not necessarily slow like she's gonna do in these back offs, but just more in position and more tension. So that way we can accumulate some good volume. That first rep on both of those sets was RP six or seven at the top. She should have been able to get that rep no problem, but instead of her keeping that bar close to the body, she descended down like you see here. She let it drift away from her and it caused some consistency issues. So this is something we're gonna fix moving forward but that's pretty much it for the video guys just want to give you some insight and some tips on our training and everything all that good stuff if you have any questions leave it down below like the video give it a thumbs up share it and until next time i'll see you guys later